We must be prepared to break the failed political sense consensus wherever we find it. Take, for instance, education. There is no point just throwing on more money at it. Nicer and smarter school buildings don't necessarily produce literate pupils. Vouchers and grammar schools, of course, are obvious. Of course we must take power away from the failed education establishment and give it to parents. Even the conservatives are saying that. But we must look deeper. We must look at the soil in which the roots of our education system feed. And that soil is not our primary school. It is teacher training. I spent 10 years validating the former polytechnics in the 80s and 90s. And there is still far too much emphasis on training future teachers how to, and I quote, permeate the whole curriculum with issues of gender, race, and class. That was the mission statement of the committee which for 30 years controlled teacher training in this country. Permeate the whole curriculum with issues of gender, race, and class. Ladies and gentlemen, does that ring a bell about the roots of political correctness? I think it does. University budget cuts are in the news nowadays. If I was cutting university spending, I would start by looking at the humanities departments of the former polytechnics. I say this because the polytechnics were created by bolting new humanities departments onto the excellent former technical colleges. And it was in those humanities departments that the gender, race, and class agenda took hold. There is not much point in them if students are unemployable when they leave, it's unfair to the students, not to mention the taxpayer. And I think, ladies and gentlemen, there is one other very big idea whose time has come, direct democracy. Something like the Swiss system of binding national and local referendums. Of course, our political class hates it. But I see it as perhaps the only way now for power to be returned to the people. Even when we get our sovereignty back from the EU, and we will, we, st we will still be faced with armies of Sir Humphreys calling their departmental tunes, to which our wretched ministers can do nothing but dance. So I think that this is an idea that we should strongly th promote throughout the campaign. Many of the 40% of our people who have given up bothering to vote will actually do so if they can see that their vote matters, that it will make a difference. Ladies and gentlemen, I think it really is time that we started telling our politicians and our bureaucrats what to do. They are, after all, supposed to be our servants. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I conclude on what I fear will be perhaps a more controversial note. Um, I fear we have to face up to some of our own internal prejudices. We must remember the prime object of our exercise, which is to get this country out of the EU. The easiest way to do that is, of course, to win a binding referendum. But in the absence of that, we must also do what we can to get people into the House of Commons who will really fight for our freedom. We must not stop them doing so by standing against them if, they are unlike, if, they are, if we are unlikely to win the seat. To do so would be to defeat our own greater purpose. It would be to put our party and our local enthusiasms before our country. The Conservatives have done that, as you know, and we must not do it. I am not talking about candidates who just say they think we would be better off out of the EU. I am talking about candidates, and there are very few, perhaps seven or eight, in the whole country, who I am convinced will force questions and debates in and outside the Commons, and who will, if necessary, defy their whips. And of course it has to be clear that if we stood against them, we really could prevent them from being elected. It is quite extraordinary, ladies and gentlemen, how little the House of Commons debates anything to do with the European Union. Last year, I had the ability to ask six MPs in a row uh, what co-reper is, what the Committee of Permanent Representatives, the committee in which 
All EU legislation is negotiated in secret after it's emerged in secret from the, the European Commission and before it goes to the Council of Ministers. Six MPs in a row, ladies and gentlemen. Not one of them knew the answer. I think we have to get some knowledge and some debate into the House of Commons. Now, <laughs> now, ladies and gentlemen, I was at the question and answer session and so I know that this is not an easy concept for many of you, and I respect you for that. But it doesn't help to say that these candidates should simply cross the floor and join us. That would not take us any nearer our goal. It would not advance our cause. Of course, I will be talking to the candidates personally, and as I say, there are not very many of them, and to their chairman. And I hope I can persuade them to see that if they stand down and fight elsewhere, they really will be breaking the mold of British politics. This has never been done before, ladies and gentlemen. They will, in fact, be making history, and so will we. I imagine the candidates will be on national news. And so I believe that this policy will help to convince the electorate everywhere that we really are different, that we are not just another political party pursuing our own selfish interest. So there it is, ladies and gentlemen, straight talking again, I'm afraid. <laughs> there will be much more of it in the weeks ahead. We are indeed very different from the other political parties. As I said when you did me the honor of making me your leader, UKIP is not for lemmings, it is not for sheep. UKIP is for independent thinkers who share a common passion for our country and who do their best to mold themselves into a cohesive political force to achieve its salvation. Ladies and gentlemen, I end by reminding you of the words of my friend Alexander Solzhenitsyn, spoken from the depths of his Soviet prison camp. One word of truth outweighs the whole world. Ladies and gentlemen, let us now put those words to the test. Thank you. So that was Lord Pearson, the leader of the UK Independence Party at its one-day spring conference, uh, talking about his manifesto and his party's policies for the general election.